Good morning and welcome to Morning Moments. Uh, today we're out in the woods with uh, with J uh, George A. Johnson. Uh, George is a Emmy Award winning director, uh, producer, or a writer, and I'm sure he's got other slashes. Anybody in those positions do a little bit of everything in film industry. And it has been a pleasure to be able to, to have him on my show today. And uh, I ask him the simple question, hey, George, what do you do and why do you do it? Welcome, George. Hi, thank you, Andy. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, like you said, out in the woods, we've got uh, a house full of soccer players right now. And it's so noisy, you wouldn't be able to hear a thing I was saying. So I'm I'm in the tree house today for the interview. So, <laughs> so if you see me swatting mosquitoes, that's that's why. And I have to tell you, you're my first treehouse interview I've ever had. So you, you know, I just want to. <laughs> I was hoping you... so. Yeah, yeah, that's the look you were looking for today. So thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah. Well, thank you for having me. Where Where do you want to start? Where do you want to? Well, tell me about this. Tell me about why you do what you do. What What motivates you to to get up and and do films to direct, produce, and write. Where did that? Where did this desire come from uh, to do what what you're doing? That's that's a great question. Um, honestly, it's always been there. I I don't remember a time when it wasn't there. Uh, my mom tells me, and I actually remember when I was like two, we had a chair that was about eight inches off the floor, and it had these flaps around the outside, and I'd climb under those flaps with these little toy action figures and make little movies little stories with these action figures and then um when i was maybe six five six years old i bought a little eight millimeter film camera at a garage sale and we didn't have a lot of money so i couldn't afford the film but i'd wind it up and make it buzz and shoot little movies with my brother and my cousin and you know tell little stories of course uh those movies wouldn't have gotten anybody saved those were more like you know rambo and <laughs> all kinds of goofy wacky stuff we made back then but um, I just always wanted to create stories that would um, get people asking questions about God. It would just conversation starters for the kingdom. And uh, I bought my first camcorder, a VHSC camcorder with paper out money when I was 12 and I could finally shoot my movies. And then that's just all I did through high school and then, you know, into college. And just that's that's just all I've ever done. It, um, it, and, Go ahead. I am so amazed when I find out that, you know, the baseball player, the singer, who, whatever God's gift for you, he plants that in such an early life, early time in your life going, this is what I want you to do. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's one of those things, and I'm sure most of them go through that, where I grew up in Michigan way before it was cool to make movies in Michigan. And so I'm thinking, you know, as a, as a kid growing up on a farm in a town of 280 people, like there's no way I can ever make a movie. Right. And so it was like, it just seemed like this far fetched thing, but somehow I just knew it was going to happen eventually. So I played, I just basically made a lifestyle of play out of making, that's what I did. I like never went to a high school dance. I was writing movies and shooting short films with my friends. That's just all I ever did. And um, I just played until suddenly I turned around and it was my career. And I still play. It's, to me, it's just it's fun. Yeah, if you could do a job and and not not feel like a job, that's that's the, what you need to do, right? Yeah. Yep. So that 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 built within you to tell the story to get in either the story you wrote or somebody else wrote too to get that story out there, right? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I've never shot anything. I think that someone else wrote. Ah, I don't think so. I've done, I've done five feature films and then something like eight thousand commercials and music videos and films, and I've I've written them all. And so I think um, writing is kind of the heart of what I do is yeah. creating. Sounds like it through writing, and then um, you know. When you're a kid growing up in Michigan, if you want to make a movie, you pretty much have to do everything. So oh. you just, you know, you, you pick up the other jobs because you have to or your movie's never going to exist. So um, writing has always kind of been the first passion and directing is right there with it. It's just, it's cool to kind of guide the story as it 
you know, it, it's given birth as it comes to life. You know, the team comes together, the actors and the crew. It's kind of like you're a, you're a maternity doctor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You've got this, this story that you've had, you know, it's the, the pregnation process for you. You're, you've been waiting months and months for this story to come to life. And then directing is just sort of making sure everything goes smoothly and you have a healthy baby at the end, hopefully. <laughs> you know, I've, I've had uh, songwriters on before, too, and they've told me that same that same analogy. These are my babies. And uh, yes. they and I had one uh, songwriter said, and I just don't let anybody have my baby. And he <laughs> holds on right. to it tightly because he doesn't want the wrong person to say it. And that's how uh, that's how he how he feels and and you you labor over that it's a labor of love yeah. when you go from from ideal concept to reality of actually having it seen by an audience that's a long yeah. process isn't it oh yeah years yeah my first one dreamer took i think it was about four years to get that one made you know from starting to write the script to the final edit happening uh, and actually, my first two movies, I was editing like the night of the world premiere. Oh, <laughs> like, I, mean, I just I couldn't finish it, you know. And so quickly burn that DVD or Blu-ray and run to the theater. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. what if, what have you got to tell people about about folks with a vision? What what can you tell them to encourage them when? when they have a vision on their heart, uh, what has helped you stay focused on that vision? You just have to never stop. Um, there's something just life-giving about knowing God's given you a calling and moving in that direction. And no matter what, if you abandon the vision and go get a job you know, as a plumber or in fast food or whatever you're not gifted to do, you're still gonna run into bumps and, and brick walls and you're gonna have problems. So stick with the vision. You're going to have speed bumps. You're going to have people telling you you can't do it. You're going to run into brick walls. When you hit those walls, that's an opportunity for God to open a door. And then the, the best part of getting to the dream that's in your heart is knowing you didn't get there alone. And so if it's so easy that I can just go out and do it. If, if my dream is to make a short film about me walking to the mailbox, it's not much of a dream. But, you know, if, if you need God to part the sea for you, then you know he's in it and he's called you to it for a reason and he's got something he wants to do through it. So you're going, I guess that's the big thing is you're going to run into brick walls. You're going to have speed bumps. You're going to face trials. It's, it's going to be difficult at times, but it's going to be incredibly rewarding. And even the difficult parts as you get through each of those little phases is incredibly rewarding. You know, I somebody told me, and I've been saying this saying a few times, is uh, speed is not near as important as direction. You could go yes. full speed ahead <laughs> in the wrong direction and <laughs> never get where you're supposed to be. But yes. sometimes, uh, you know, the important thing is, God, I need to know, am I heading in the right direction? I don't care yeah. about my speed. I want to know. Yeah. And, and then God wants you to know that, that faithfulness of just doing what you're supposed to in that right direction every day. And I think that's a key is saying, God, just put me today where you need to be today. Yeah. Amen. Yep. Amen. Well, <laughs> I, I thank you, uh, George, for, for climbing the tree and getting in the tree house <laughs> for this interview. And I've had interviews different places, but I've never had anybody go to the tree house. And uh, <laughs> just before we were starting, his son was trying to photobomb us in the climbing the he tree was. behind him Try, he was not there now but he was climbing the tree behind us and i thought boy i wish wish we were recording this this was great uh, so you <laughs> never know what's going to happen in these interviews i want to thank you uh, what i'm going to do is down below i'm going to put george's uh his his accomplishments and his his films down below so that you, you could see that in the comment section but more important than that I want you all to be praying for George A. Johnson, that God would continue to use him, put him in the right place at the right time, have the right actors come his way, the the right uh, the right people, the right the right uh, 
um, scenery and everything that comes in, but that that takes a direction just from God. Uh, and when you when he knows uh, there are people praying for him, he he'll go straight ahead and go with with with, with God's confidence that he's 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 doing what he should. But he needs prayer from you, and I want you to be praying for him if you would please, uh, my audience. Thank you so much. Uh, any closing thoughts before we leave, uh, George? It was just a real privilege spending time with you today. I appreciate getting to know you and just your heart and the ministry you have here. So thank you for letting me be a part of this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pass this message on the, you know, and uh, this could be a, this could be a new, new theme. Uh, the, the interview from the Treehouse. we could, we could even do a new podcast, the Treehouse podcast, right? So uh, <laughs> thank you, George, so much. And uh, keep following what God has for you to do. And may God richly bless you. And thank you for watching Morning Moments with us today. Thank you. Thank you.